Well, the nature of the concern is that it's all woods there. And uh, so we might want to get a fire truck to way out in the woods if there were a fire there. Uh, and That's secondly, it's people's problem. Uh, so their it, their responsibility their... is to get a fire truck to their house, which they've done. I'm They're not about... responsible for getting a fire truck beyond their house. Well, beyond their house includes their property, their their lot quite a bit. When they originally built this road, they built the road past like three properties that get to theirs. When they did it just a few years ago to build their house, they already built a huge section of road there. The other thing I'm looking for simply is, is a, an idea of how connectivity will eventually occur, hopefully. Yeah, I don't... I don't know as though we can gain that insight or force our hand here, but okay. um, all right, everyone's read the letter and all in favor of sending that letter. Um, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Bran? Bran, aye. Knapp? Aye. Diamond? Diamond, aye. Dennis and I. Uh, Allard has returned. Allard is back, aye. Thank you. Uh, we'll all in favor of sending the letter to the memo letter to uh, the selectman. All right. Um, back to the minutes. Anybody have any questions, comments, corrections about the minutes from May 19th? Nope. No, no, all good. Hearing no complaints. I'll uh, still do a roll call. Uh, Bran? Nap. Aye. Diamond. Diamond, aye. Allard. Allard, aye. Janice and I. Minutes are approved as written. Um, reports from other committees. I just have, well, and I don't know if this is not really a committee, but I have, um, I just want to run something by you. I spoke with um, someone from Southeast Land Trust. They're going to be looking to do, um, and had been asked to do, another a parking lot. I know we've had two that's come before us already. Um, this would be a third one. This is um, on the road that goes to Stonehouse Pond. So it's about 100 feet down into Stonehouse Pond. Um, and I, what I did was ask them to... Um, submit to me what they had because they're talking about 10 gravel parking spaces and I know we've kind of been a little bit flexible on that but I wanted to, to have a better idea what they were doing before um, I advised them on what to send to the planning board what, what level of application they're going to need and I just wanted to make you aware if you guys have any comments or anything thoughts you want to give me about that I thought we kind of told the, the, everybody what we wanted when they did the, the ones for Stonehouse. Well, this is not Stonehouse. That was yeah. I just I and until I see it, you know, it's, it's hard to say what's missing right i know there's a lot of they're they're right up against the wetlands there so i mean it's kind of site specific as to where they're putting it and all that um so i guess use your best judgment on that one marcia I'll do. <laughs> and I, I want to make a comment in regards to that. I don't know if everybody's um, familiar with the new proposed um, committee Matt Town representative is trying to um, to get together with shooting in Barrington and, and trying to limit noise and shooting safety concerns. Um, one of my bigger concerns with all this parking and con conservation space is as more... Um, Enviro tourism comes, um, other property rights are diminished, and you know they think they have precedence over that. So um, he's trying to put together a committee to combat um, shooting near other stuff. Um, so uh, I don't. If anybody's interested in that, I'll he's put that out there. To conservation on Thursday about it. And so I, it, my feeling is, what was that, Jeff? You muted. That was Barbara was we had some information. He had yeah, a, he, yeah, he um, posted a, about the petition on Facebook on the Barrington community page. Yeah. And so I've been following it because Scott wrote it pretty well though. Scott Young, I thought, support <laughs> not him. But Matt Town is going to be at the conservation 
meeting Thursday talking about it. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, I'm listening. I okay. think we all hear you. Um, yeah, thir this Thursday? Yep, he asked for 20 minutes. All right. I'm sure everybody has different opinions and it's I think it's something Matt will have to take to the state level. I don't think the town has the right to overall overrule the state and federal laws on right. shooting. Right. Up. He's yeah. trying to circumvent by going the noise ordinance route um, and a safety. Um, so I just. Well, the noise ordinance applies perfectly well. That should solve any problems there are. Yeah, it's not satisfying the problem that of one resident has. So they're addressing it this different way. Um, and um, he has safety concerns. And my, my reply to that is limit hiking in the woods if you feel unsafe. <laughs> well, the other thing you have to remember with the no noise ordinance, it has to be sustained. And sustained is continuous. So right. But it doesn't pertain to guns and shooting. Right. They're right. specifically excluded, and that's his issue. So, yeah. But, it, it is? Guns yeah. are excluded? Correct. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. It's a touchy subject, and I don't know if this is the correct forum, but I thought I'd bring it up if anybody's interested, and, in, um, you know, as it may um, come to us a little bit. Um, and I like talking about it, but I don't know about other people's opinions. Um, any other unfinished business? Yep. Uh, okay, so you should all have gotten an email. Wait, wait. We need to talk about the two um, meetings this summer. Yes. Okay. I say so we cancel the 20. Yeah. yeah. We'll do one meet. meeting in July and one in August. I agree. Yeah, I think so. The first meeting of the month for July and August, second meetings can. Okay. To the rest of the board. Ron, I know you kind of weren't in favor of it last time. No, um, I, was, I was in favor of scheduling it that way. But if we have overflow, I don't think it's right for applicants to be having to be on the phone until 11, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night. So to me, it's if if we have enough that we're going to go that late, we I should think we reconsider. should go to the meetings. OK, that's it. I think, it. I think we should try to schedule one. I'm all in favor of one if all we right. can yeah. do it. But right. if, right now, if it becomes untenable. Schedule. Looking at what we've continued in the schedule, it, it doesn't look like that that's going to be a problem. Okay. Steve, you on board with one meeting in July and August? Sure. Okay. Andy is with a thumbs up. All right. And back, you got that, uh, Barbara, and back to Jeff's um, regulation yes. address. So, you know, a couple of meetings ago, we discussed people, and, and we couldn't have had a better example than this week, uh, when people are throwing documents at us to be discussed in a meeting one or two days before the meeting, which means the packets. I, I mean, it puts the land use burden on them because they got to post all these materials so that the public can see it. We got to have time to review these things. Barbara's out there emailing stuff, trying to get it to us uh, before the meeting after the packets have been made up. And it doesn't give the public their time in order to review these documents, which they're supposed to have so they can make appropriate uh, public comment. Now, if you go back to our approved, which we approved 20 June, 2017, our rules uh, uh, say that uh, once an application has been accepted as complete, any additional materials are supposed to be received by the land use office uh, no later than one week prior to the meeting. And it also, and then they got to get them to us within four days, which means by Thursday, then Barb can get it if they get it in by the one week. Now, <clears throat> with that said, <clears throat> one of the things that I did note is, uh, and Barb, uh, I, I, the rules of procedure for the board, I believe, ought to be posted on the land use department and one of the documents because it, I had to go find it in the minutes of the June 2017 uh, meeting to find the ones that we finally approved. So I, I think that ought to go up on the website. Um, but, you know, for an applicant, you know, they're looking what through the rules, they're going by either the subdivision or by the site plan review reviews. They're not going to think to go look at our administrative rules in order to figure out when they got to put documents. So that's why I'm proposing that we change the, the uh, site plan review regulations 
to address the, uh, the submission of additional documentation to match what are, are in our rules or procedure. So that way the applicants can find it easily. And it kind of highlights, illuminates the fact that we got to get these documents in a timely manner. Yeah, I think I think that's appropriate to add that there. Um, I would still stress, I know talking to others, uh, you know, uh, flexibility in that because just like Joel tonight, if that standard was held very strictly, we would have to reschedule Joel to change his waivers and, and, and stuff like that. So I think it's we important. Can, but we can always decide to waive the rules. Yes. We have the power to waive any regulation per the state statute. So we can waive it if we want to, but I think our going in position is, here's the rules, you should comply. If we decide to give somebody a break, fine. But I'm sorry, this has gotten to be pretty standard procedure, people throwing documents in within a couple of days of meetings. And I think we need to put a stop to it. We need to follow our own rules or procedure. I agree we can, we can be flexible, but at the same time, I think but, things are but, getting Hot, hot. Someone's going to weigh in. Was that? <clears throat> I was going to say, how do we maintain flexibility if staff is receiving those documents a day or two before? How do they decide what's flexible and what's not acceptable by the board if they're not receiving them? Well, that's not the staff's problem. The staff has to receive the document. It's up to us, the boards, to follow our rules uh, of procedure. So it's up to us to enforce the rules. It's not up to the office to decide whether to accept or not accept the document. They can accept it, but that doesn't that then we go back, that gets handed to us. It's up to us to follow the rules. I'm just trying to see what that looks like. So we they get a late submission. We're in the meeting as of tonight, and we say you had a late submission. Sorry, come back next time. Sure. I just Although and that may fact, be appropriate. I got to tell you, if Barrington Shores had wanted to press for us to make a decision tonight, I absolutely would have said, no, I, I'm, I'm going to offer a motion for a continuance. Period. And, and, that, and we always have that right. And I think that's, I think, and that's good to maintain, but I don't want I mean, that to be the default. But, but look at what we just did with the waiver on the monument. I mean, that requirement's there, but... We decide to waive the requirement. Right. Now, this doesn't require us, but we we can make the decision. But the requirement's still there. We expect people to comply unless there's a damn good reason why they don't. I would, it, I would I would I think it's appropriate to emphasize our position and our rule, but I don't think it would be appropriate to change how we've been doing it. I think it's been fair and appropriate, even if it is a little bit. Um, um, uh, falling short of the right word but i do encourage you if you don't think you've had time to review i do encourage anybody to say i'm not ready to approve and we need to postpone if if it's been a short a, a last minute introduction but i just don't want to go into meetings but saying it's, it's a not, late one let's see if we want to kick it down the road before we do some work on it does that well, make sense uh, no so the land use office accepts the document they pass it to us so it has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with us, you know? Right. It, so if a document comes in late, it doesn't meet that criteria. And, and the reason, I want, like I said, the, the, the real reason I want to make the change is just that then the regulation will reflect what's in our rules of procedure, which people may not know. You know, if we put this out in writing in the regulations that the people should be consulting, then uh, more people will be aware uh, of what the time limits are. I'm not saying we can't accept it, but there may, you know, everybody needs to understand the rules. So if somebody like had, like tonight, when uh, when Barrington Shores Campground came in, if they came in and, and they had said, hey, we want action in this, and we had said, hey, you just threw a boatload of documents at us. We haven't had time to review them. And nor has the public, so we're going to have to continue. Us. If they start screaming and yelling, I want them to understand what the rules are before they start. But yes, I that's agree the with other you. Piece of this. You're talking about the board. Remember, we it's not just the board that gets to look at, review, and comment on these documents. It's the public. And so, you know, if we've got one like Barrington Shores Campground where you've got a lot of interest in it, 
And then you throw documents out at the late, last minute that the public can't see or, and, and formulate comments on, that's not fair to the public. Possibly well, not. Oops, someone else trying to... I don't know if I'm hearing reverb my own mic or uh, someone else trying to get in there. Um, I agree. By putting it where you suggest, does it then give the public the right to say you can't hear this because it's not in your rules? We no longer have the authority to waive that because if you're saying they have the right to review this and we put it in the regulations as such, and if we do not allow them the time, the appropriate week to review it, are we then putting ourselves out there? Well, well first off, that's the... the that's already in our rules of procedure. If somebody wanted to point the finger at us and say, hey, you're not following the, your rules of procedure, then you're already over a barrel. But we so have I, the ability to waive those, don't we? Regulations to make it more accessible changes that one way or the other. I, to, I, my general comment is I agree with what Jeff's saying because it has been... It, I see it more and more where it's common practice where the day of people are shooting something in there to say, hey, look, we've been, we, you know, to make sure we're, you know, we've reviewed it and we've talked it over and we're, we're having everyone give their opinion on it and we needed to make these changes for, for it. And then we're, we're seeing it, like I opened my email here and I was looking at all my town emails this afternoon and between one and like four o'clock, I ended up with, uh, um, I don't have it all here right now, but I can tell you. Seven extra. Up, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't opened any of those emails. Like I got a change request at 415 and I haven't looked at that. Yeah, this right. is wrong. That's, I think, that's I think exactly Jeff first point is absolutely on point where if it's in administrative rules we should put it where the people tend to read it so they're aware of that requirement so i think duplicating it so it's in multiple sections is absolutely the right thing to do i don't think that necessarily takes away any flexibility i think jeff is right if, if barrington shores if it's significant and it's you know, it's a huge thing we should be able to kick it down the road if we're not ready on, on the other hand some of these things are relatively minor and i think going forward on with a relatively minor one is not an issue so I don't think it takes away from our flexibility, but I think it does a better job of communicating it and not protecting us if we do kick it down the road because it's too late. Well, when the last time this came up a couple of meetings ago, it was one of those cases where a document came flying in the door at the last minute. Well, I asked everybody, has everybody had a chance to review it? It was not significant, but it wasn't insignificant. Everybody on the board responded, yeah, I, I had time to look at it. So, you know, I didn't object at that point because I had looked at it also that we could move forward with consideration. But, you know, if we get into a situation where something comes in and obviously, it, you know, it's significant, like t tonight with Barrett and Shores, then we should be able to kick it down the, down the road and say, hey, listen, here's what the requirements are. You didn't meet them. We haven't had time. The public hasn't had time. And I, I think that's another aspect. I don't want to yeah. forget about the public input. That's no. And I agree. We have that authority now. I think it's appropriate to put it where it's front and center so everybody can see it. Um, I just like playing devil's advocate at times as well. So we get it all out there. Um, and uh, so and I think the other thing, the other thing, too, is that if we've created this new rush system where everybody's trying to jam stuff in because everybody's busy, maybe we shouldn't have this new rush. This is how long it takes. And if you can't get it in a week in advance, this is how long it takes. It takes well, this long to get things approved. Yeah, I want, that's why I yeah. want to be up front with people, you know. I mean, yeah. I know they're all busy doing their jobs, trying to kind of get information. I've, I've been in an engineering office. I know how that works. I mean, everything's push, push, push. But, you know, they need to understand we need – this is a process. It takes time. We're not trying to hold anybody up. I don't know anybody on the on this board in the last four and a half years I've been on it that has purposely tried to hold anything. Up. So I, we're just trying to follow the process. Yeah, Marsha, do you see any problem with putting that into the regulations? From you know, Oop. oh, we can't you're, hear you. Mu you're muted. No, I don't see a problem. I think the easier thing would be actually to get it uploaded to the website. 
um, to get that out there. But. All right. So the process is the, the the site review regulations. We approve those, but mm -hmm. don't we have to have a public a, a public hearing? We have on a public it? hearing. Mm -hmm. All right. So Let's if everybody's the, read it and they're comfortable with it, should we put that on the schedule for the next meeting and announce a public hearing? I'm I'm ha I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine with that as well, but it, you know, to Jamie's point, the first time we invoke this, somebody's going to be pissed. <laughs> well, so we, uh, we, we have, have the to, right we have to invoke at some point, otherwise no one will believe us. Right. That's right. right. Actually, you're right, Jamie. We're at, right now, our rules of procedure, which are approved, we could invoke it today. I just don't want to blindside anybody. No. I think putting it out there, it'll be... Uh, would, would it be more prudent to put together the changes that you, because you got a whole bunch of stuff that you wanted to change in your site review to hold one meeting and get them all done? Because if you do one paragraph one week and then another week do another paragraph and another week do another paragraph and you got to put the notice in the paper every time you do it because of the posting your public hearing for a site review change, there's a point to where, I mean, you really want to just put it in there for one paragraph? John, Yes, John, and I'll tell you why. All the changes you're talking, we have accumulated a bunch of changes. I've, I've proposed some, Marsha's been working on some. That's going to require probably at least a half, if not an entire meeting to get through. Uh, and, 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 you know, I think this is something that's an immediate need. And we can get through this, make this change. And, and we've already just decided to cancel the second meetings in July and August. Yes, we need to get through those other things, monuments and all kinds of and drainage, and yeah, but that's going to take time. And I, I don't think we need to hold this up. Well, so we let's, need to do those things. Let's plan a meeting and let's get through the other stuff. All right. So let's do this one, and then we'll group the rest of them together and try and knock those all out as another block. All right. Is there anything Howdy. else? Oops, sorry. I have a question. Yep. Masha, does this have to be posted in the paper? I have to look. It does have. I believe it does have to be posted. I know some. Yeah, it does does, have to be. I don't know the other, and you know, this could cost a lot of money for all you nice taxpayers out there. But if you don't mind paying it, I'll post it. Yeah, you got to go through the whole process of the posting and notice and everything. That one paragraph could be a couple hundred dollars. Just so you guys know. Really? But I don't want to hold it up while we try to get through all the other changes. Is the, uh, I mean, if we post all the things, I mean, is it? You don't get a deal. It could cost you $600. Hmm. The more you post. Because we still have to put that COVID oh. thing in the paper. How, how, how about if we take a look at it and make a decision on what we're going to do at the next meeting? Well, wait a minute. When we post, uh, if we've got three things that are going to have in a meeting, you know, for discuss, like the application we had today. So if we, we advertise three at once, is it three times the cost or you, we just put out a notice and, you know, for all three things and that's what we pay for. Each notice right now, because of this COVID thing, is two hundred and twenty-two dollars for what's their the, little blurb. What's, what's in the, the agenda plus thirty dollars because they have to keep it in the paper online for thirty days. What's the COVID so that's thing? Two hundred and fifty-three dollars for one of them items on the agenda. What's the COVID with, thing got to do with the cost of the? Because you have to put legally have that posted. Just a reason to charge to whatever. That, in our ad. that whole notice that's at the very beginning that Jamie reads oh, has okay. to be all included in the end uh, of the paper. Okay, so it's, it's based on the lines of text. Yes, newspapers have always been that way. Oh. Yeah, so I think the cost is going to be the. I mean, marginal. I don't want to spend money frivolously, but I think if it's something that probably should be done. If the board agrees, <coughs> I got a thumbs up from Steve, Ron. Got three I thumbs think up. Our time is valuable too. All right, so we'll plan on posting it. All right, anything else? If not, we will adjourn till 
the ninth for the site walk. Did you get that information, Steve? All set. Okay. Very good. Everyone have a great night. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Take care, guys. All, All right. right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Barbara Irvine.